exactly do you make money doing that? Yeah, so this is a question I get asked quite a lot. So I've, I've said often on the channel that I made my money by betting the economy would be shit forever. And people want to know exactly what that means. So I was an interest rates trader. And when you hear interest rates trading, you should always think that that's the trading of loans, essentially. The borrowing and lending of money. You want to borrow money at a low interest rate and lend money at a high interest rate. So I started working in 2008. In 2008, central bank interest rates went to effectively zero all over the world, which meant that you could borrow money effectively for free, almost for no interest. But sometimes people will want to borrow money in a year's time. Say, for example, you're a big corporation and you've got a loan and you know the loan is going to expire next year in June. Okay. So when next year June comes, you're going to need to get a new loan. Just like you might have a mortgage that expires, okay? So you've got a loan, it expires in a year, and you're, you come to me, trader at Citibank, and you say, okay, I want to borrow money starting from next year. Okay. Well, at the moment, we know that the interest rates are zero, but we don't know what the rates are going to be in a year's time, right? But for the whole sort of 12-year period between 2008 and 2020, economists and traders generally thought that the economy is about to recover, which means that interest rates are about to go up. So even though rates are zero now, in a year's time, they're probably going to be like 2%, 1.5%, 2%. So if you were to call up a bank and say, I want to borrow money starting from next year, they're going to say, okay, well, that's going to cost you 2% interest, right? But I came to the conclusion the economy would never recover, which means that rates would stay zero basically permanently. So I could call these banks up and say, okay, what's your interest rate for next year? They'll say 2%. I will say, I will lend you money at 2% next year, and then I'll just wait. And then when next year comes, as time goes by, time goes by, it slowly becomes apparent to people that the economy is not recovering and that interest rates are going to stay zero. So as we approach next year, everybody starts to realise, oh, actually, rates are going to stay zero. But that guy has already agreed to borrow money from me at 2%, right? So as we come close to the time and the rates are still zero, I can then borrow at 0%, lend to that guy at 2% and make the money in between. And if you do that with a billion dollars, then you make 2% of a billion dollars, which is $20 million. So it's, it's as simple as that, basically. Like, for, it's, it's amazing. For 12 years after 2008, everybody thought, well, not everybody, but the vast majority of economists, traders thought that rates would go up the following year, every single year, which meant that you could always lend money at, you know, one and a half, two percent, even though rates were currently zero. So you could just keep lending money at one and a half, two percent and then just wait a year, borrow it back at zero. And I did that trade. You know, I did that trade in 2011. I did the trade in 2012. And then after I quit banking, I did that trade myself every year. You know, I made money every year. Um, and I know the people watching are going to be like, fantastic, we can do that trade. Well, unfortunately, guys watching, that trade is not profitable anymore because now for better or worse, my basic belief that rates will stay zero forever is now basically the norm. And everybody, you know, the, the consensus now is that rates never go up. And I think it's worth sitting and thinking about what that means, because this is kind of basically like the global economists in the market saying, actually, we agree with Gary. The economy is fucked forever and the economy does never get better. This is like basically accepted now in the markets. You know, that's pretty amazing that that's happened. Um, and not only is it terrible, but it means I can't make money on that trade anymore, which is even worse than the demise of the global economy. Um, but obviously, I've still got other trades on. I think, you know, I don't want to talk too much about the trades I've got on now because I don't want to encourage people into the world of online trading, which is very, very dangerous, which we'll talk more about in future videos. Um, but yeah, that's a question that I get a lot. What was the trade that you did? Um, and that was it. That's how I bet on and made millions of pounds by predicting the disaster of the global economy. And one thing I would like to add is, it's a pretty mad world that we live in where you can be paid millions of pounds to predict the collapse of the global economy and the next year you can get paid a million pounds again and at no point does anyone ever think to say maybe we should do something about this. Maybe you should talk to the Prime Minister, you know, Maybe you should go talk to economists at universities. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I do. And it's slightly... 
I mean, I'm aware of the story, and originally it's like, well, you realise no one else did, type of everyone's just a bit ignorant. But you're saying that actually there is a consensus now that that is the situation. Yeah, and I think this is, you know... That's alarming. This is why I wanted to make the video which we made before, where, to explain what is going on in the economy. Because right now, the media has no clue what is happening and is massively misrepresenting and misportraying what's happening. Whereas financial markets understand that this situation is absolutely terrible and things are going to be fucked for a long time if we don't do anything financial markets are accepting this but the media is not accepting this so i think people need to know because the problem is people in financial markets know but they're all rich they are not going to help you <laughs> these guys are not going to save it you know what i mean so the way things are going right now rich people are going to do fantastically well ordinary people are going to be massively fucked and ordinary people are not being told so that's why we have to do this we have to tell ordinary people what's happening and Ordinary people, unfortunately, need to be willing to come together to push back against it because no one is going to save us. You know what I mean? Rupert Murdoch is not going to save these guys. You know what I mean? Boris Johnson and Keir Starmer, neither of them are going to save these guys. You know what I mean? And the financial markets are not going to save them. And Andrew Bailey at the Bank of England is not going to save them. Nobody, nobody with a voice in economics comes from a poor background. These guys don't give a fuck, okay? They are not going to save ordinary people. And ordinary people are being convinced by... YouTube, that the only thing they can do to fight back is trade monkeys on the internet. You know what I mean? Or trade Bitcoin. You know what I mean? Listen, if there is no political response, the future is going to be a fucking disaster. And I, I don't take any joy from saying that, right? This is why we are up here making these videos, because I don't want that to happen, okay? This is why I'm not in a skyscraper making two million pounds a year, because I don't want that to happen. I don't want the future to be fucked. But it will only not be fucked if ordinary people come together to do something about it. And I, my worry is that with the last two and a half years, societal trust and societal cooperation has broken down to a degree. And if ordinary people are not willing and able to come together, we will lose. So we need to create a space where people come together and support each other to fight back. And that means coming together across, you know, across class boundaries, ac across racial boundaries, across, you know, every kind of boundary, you know what I mean? We need men, we need women, we need people from every community to come together because everyone who is from a poor and ordinary background is going to be affected if we don't do anything. And it's going to require, to a degree, people willing to say, look, I'm not going to spend my time trying to do online trading on the internet. I'm going to devote a bit of time to building some community to, to, to come back against it because it's the only way. It's the only way, you know. It's only, it, it, we can only change it for the positive if people come together. So... Um, that is why you have to share this video. I mean, that's all we can do. You know, we're trying to build something, get people together to, um, to make things better, to understand what's happening. And um, I'll keep doing it. You'll keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep making them. Um, but just a little follow on from that. It's interesting because you said that it's now the consensus that actually you're right and interest rates, well, I'm sure not everyone's like particularly, Gary's right, but that interest rates. That's what they all say. That's what they then, in, yeah. in relation to this cost of living crisis, yeah. they have actually marginally put the interest rates up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. And I, I'm, at this point, I'm not betting on interest rates staying low. I do think interest rates probably will stay quite low. Um, I'm not absolutely 100% certain. I'm not as confident as I have been at times in the past. Um, and I'm not betting on that at the moment. Uh, interest rates could go up a bit higher. My expectation... But if yeah. they're going up, does that mean the economy's not fucked forever then? Not really, because what is important, this is slightly technical, it's not just the interest rate, but the real interest rate. It's the difference between the interest rate and inflation. Because, you know, there are a lot of very... Countries with not great economies, you know, for example, India, does not have a particularly strong economy on a global scale, which has high interest rates, but also high inflation. Which means effectively your money's not growing, right? Because, you know, if you make 7% a year on your money, but inflation is 7% a year, your actual real growth in your wealth is, is effectively zero. Um, and I think it's, it's not impossible, well, I don't think it's the most likely outcome, that the UK is sort of moving into this more situation which is common for poorer countries where inflation is permanently higher and then interest rates are permanently higher. But, you know... What matters is, can you actually grow your wealth? And, you know, if interest rates are... You know, at the moment, interest rates have gone up to, I think, 0.5%, but inflation is like 7%. <laughs> so, you know, in, in, interest rates have gone up, but in, 
in real terms, you've never been losing more on your money year by year, right? Than you are at the moment in terms of purchasing power of your money. So um, interest rates will, will definitely go up further than they are now. There will be further interest rate hikes. I suspect that in the long run they end up coming back down, but it's not impossible that they stay a bit higher, but only with high levels of inflation, in my opinion. And, you know, this is something which I'm, you know, legit professional in. And have, yeah. But I'm not betting on interest rates right now um, because I don't think that they're, I don't think that's, something that's particularly misunderstood by markets at the moment you know um i do think that the future looks very bleak though if we don't if we don't do anything and i think the only way to change that is is political action and i don't mean that in terms of vote for this party vote for that party i mean that in terms of push for action on wealth distribution wealth inequality taxation of the rich So it's intentionally designed, national insurance, so that very rich people pay a very low percent. There is one other thing they can do with that massive amount of income. They can buy your mum's house. 